This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. Deep South Dining is the show all about the culture of Southern flavor. From fried chicken and collard greens to shrimp and grits and a glass of sweet tea. Subscribe now to the podcast using any podcast app or download our MPB public media app. Good morning, good morning. Ain't it a great morning outside? I mean, it feels cool. It feels like fall. It just gets your juices going and makes you think you're going to have to pull up some of that summer stuff and start planting some winter stuff. Hey, y'all, I'm Horticulture Spelder Rushing, and I'm the host of the Gestalt Gardener here on Mississippi Public Broadcasting. My awesome host, Java Chapman, has got his work cut out today because even though this is a live call-in program, I'm broadcasting from Ascension Parish, Louisiana, about to talk to a whole bunch of master gardeners. There's a lot of events going on this weekend, but hey, if you've got some things on your gardening mind, some things you want to talk about or run by an expert who doesn't try to sell you anything, this is a place to be. Uh, Java, I am down in Cajun land, and uh, you know, it's a different kind of place. Folks here, they talk funny to me, but I talk funny to them, and we all garden the same. Anyway, I'm here talking to the Ascension County Master Gardeners. This is their first ever time to have any kind of symposium, and uh, Java, this may not mean a whole lot to you, but it means a lot to me and a lot of our listeners, but I'm sharing the stage with Peggy Martin, and Peggy Martin was a woman whose garden was under 20 feet of water back during Katrina, and two weeks later, her rose started blooming. It's a climbing rose, and uh, for a long time, she propagated, started sharing it. We don't know the name of it, but it's an incredible rose, very little disease, blooms unbelievably in the spring, and it spritz along the rest of the year. It's a climbing rose, and they call it the Katrina rose because it survived Katrina, but now it's called by the person's name who found it in her own garden, surprisingly. It's called the Peggy Martin rose. Anyway, I'm going to share the stage with Peggy Martin this morning talking about stuff, and um, just want to let you know where I am. So, Java, how's everything going in your neck of the woods? Man, everything's going good. Kind of, uh, kind of cool. I don't know what the weather. Maybe similar to um, here it is in Jackson. But yeah, we everybody has their jackets on this morning. And uh, to you, to your point in the billboard, you may feel like it's time to plant those winter things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm I'm somewhere between uh, uh, Baton Rouge and Louis in New Orleans. So, but it's subtropical in there. But it was crisp this morning. It was really, really nice, crisp, even down here. And, uh, you know, th- th- what I, this past week, getting ready for a, a big garden tour coming up next weekend, I planted a bunch of stuff. I dug up some dirt. I added some compost, watered it really good, let it settle overnight. Went, th- th- Everything got all moist. Went back the next day, and it all turned together like stirring crackers in a bowl of chili. So uh, that's that's my new go-to. I dig the dirt, add some stuff, stir it in, water it. Next day, come in. And it just crumbles together. It's a beautiful thing. But I planted uh, some more lettuce. It took three days for it to come up from seed. I planted some burgundy mustard, which would go right through the wintertime, some kale, tall plants, sort of like a, 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 a upscale collards, I guess, really, really pretty uh, plants. Um, snapdragons, pansies, violas. Uh, next week I'm going to stick some garlic cloves in the ground. So I'm getting ready for winter. I've got a pot right now, a pot full of colorful lettuces, um, and uh, uh, some violas and pansies hanging around the edge, and I got a crepe myrtle branch spray painted red stuck in the middle of it, and it looks fantastic. A pot full of colorful stuff to sort of keep me going after I pull up all my summer stuff. I got something pretty to look at. So um, anyway, uh, Java, this is uh, kind of weird for me to say. I've never done this before. You've Uh-oh. Never heard, have, Uh-oh. Have, you ever, have you ever heard of me giving a, gar- a tour of my garden to anybody, any group of folks? No, surprisingly, you are kind of, well, I know back in the past, uh, was HGTV and, and stuff like that, but yeah, you've been pretty closed off on your, on your yeah. home space. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I talk about it, I write about it, I show pictures of it, and I do some TV and magazine work, and it's actually been featured in HGTV and the New York Times, but I've never opened it up for the public because I'm really not that good a gardener. I mean, I'm a garden expert, but when it comes to actually doing stuff, I'm tired, I'm lazy, I'm busy, I'm gone. When I bend over, I see sparkly things. And so, you know, I plant stuff, and if it makes it great, if it doesn't, I pull it up and stick something else in the hole. Until now, I've got a pretty nice space i I paved over a lot of areas because i don't have grass to mow anyway bottom line i'm getting at for the first time ever my garden is going to be open for a tour 
open for tour, not this weekend, but uh, Sunday, October the 9th. Uh, there's a, a group of us got together, toured some gardens up in Memphis in the neighborhood and decided to do that uh, in Jackson, uh, me and Becky Potts and some other folks. And so Sunday, October the 9th in Fondren, it's going to be what we call the Fondren Bottle Tree Garden Tour, the kind of a funky gardens of Fondren. And it only costs five bucks, and the money is going to buy plants for public space. So it's anyway, not just going to be your garden. It's going to be other gardens, too. No, no, we we got. I think we got eighteen gardens. And oh one wow! Got a, and most of them have bottle trees. One of them got a little miniature horse in it. You know, there's just some really. It, this is what people, what I call real gardeners. Now, there's a couple of really fancy gardens designed by landscape architects, but the people who live there garden anyway. The Fondren Bottle Tree Garden Tour is going to be Sunday, October the ninth. Uh, if anybody interested in that. Um, you know, we'll be giving more details about it next week, but it's going to start at a place called the Cedars in Jackson, a historic 1850s house in Jackson called the Cedars. And we'll get some more information about that later. But anyway, I do want to give a shout out to uh, the folks in Winston County, Louisville. I gave a program there the other night, it's standing room only. We had a great time. Uh, Jim McAdory, the extension agent, and some other folks. Um, and there's going to be something tomorrow. I forgot to mention it last week, Java. A Saturday um, at 9.30, I'm going to be back at the Max. You know, you and I broadcast from the Max before on Friday. Yeah, that's like your your, your home away from home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've always broadcast. But I had uh, uh, this event in Louisiana scheduled. Uh, so instead of doing my live radio broadcast from there today, I'm going to do a program at 9.30 at the Max and Meridian, right down by the train station. I'm going to really lay it on thick, and we're going to have a plant swap. So if anybody wants to bring some plants to swap, bring it on. And then when we get done, we're going to wander over to the – um, Master Garden of Plant Sale at the Farmer's Market. Got a real nice little Farmer's Market there by the train station. Anyway, 9.30, Saturday morning at the Max. Look forward to seeing some folks there. That's tomorrow Ooh. morning? Tomorrow morning, man, yeah. Man, Felder, you're, you and your truck are on the road, man. Yeah, hey, when I get back from that, I have to drive the other side of Houston, Texas, and from there to Oklahoma City before I'm back in the studio next Friday. Make sure you um, check your oil and your and your tire pressure. I, I, I for something like this, I rent a car. I let somebody else do that. I want to, get, you know, I love taking <laughs> my truck, but it only gets sixteen miles to the gallon. I'm thinking at three bucks a pop. Nope, I'm renting a car. So anyway, uh, I've been yakking a lot. Have we got any callers? We just had a call in Jackson. Um, I think it was Curry, but they dropped off. So hopefully they'll call I've back. Yakking. I've been yakking too much, man. I've just been, I'm, I'm, I'm all I got, a, got geared up. I, I took a. Uh, uh, because I tend to get hoarse when I talk after this radio program, I'm literally walking out of here, walking onto a stage at 10 o'clock to do a, a, a lecture. So anyway, I took some allergy medicine to keep me from getting so hoarse and all, and I'm all jived up right now. Now, the one thing so, that you don't get to do when you're away, you don't get to, um, uh, what, what what shall I say, uh, liberate. Uh, some flowers um, on, on, on your walk to the studio, or have you? What have have you been seeing some cool things? No, well, you know, mostly along the roadside. Uh, you know, I've really been enjoying the the goldenrod, which is a lot of people. You know, think well, it's a weed, or they think they're allergic to it, and it is a weed if you let it get away from you. But out in the roadside, it's a wildflower in your garden. It's just a plant that'll get away from you. You just got to pull up some every now. But anyway, goldenrod is one of our most superb fall-blooming native wildflowers, and it is one of the best pollinator plants. Uh, and it got little spiders on it. They eat the aphids. and got birds that come out and eat the spiders, and they got butterflies. It's just an incredible plant. looks really, really, really good in the garden. And there's some varieties, uh, including one that's going to be on the, sh- uh, on the garden tour next week called Fireworks that looks just like fireworks, and it doesn't run and spread all over the place. Anyway. Uh, enough of that. Let's go to Curry and see what's going on with uh, in, in, in your Jackson Guard. What's up, Curry? Good morning. Good morning, Felder. How are you doing? So far, so good. Sorry I yacked so much you had to drop off earlier. Uh, yeah, uh, it, it was a mistake. But anyway, uh, I have a, 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 a climber. I don't I, I don't know the uh, exact name of it, but it has a whole lot of – it's been getting a whole lot of white fungus like stuff on it. I sent a uh, a chest message, a picture. Uh do you have it and can can you uh get any uh good 
look at that uh, climber. Where, where did where did you send the picture? Well, uh, I sent it to this this number. I sent it to this number. Okay, I I can't get pictures like that. Um, you know, do, can you do an email thing? Can you send me an email? Uh, yes, I can. Uh, yeah, because yeah. without seeing, I, I don't know what it is. You know, is it little round white spots that get bigger and they kind of run together and booger up the leaves? Does it rub off? Yeah, yes, it's real sticky and it's white and it's it's like running up the vines. Okay, um, yeah, without looking at the picture, I can't tell if it's uh, if it's powdery mildew or it might be an insect. Uh, you know, there 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 are insects that suck sap and they're and they're dripping. But but they but they surround themselves up and down the stem with this white cottony stuff that's camouflage. This look this this look more like mildew. Yeah, well, I, you know, with that again, all I can do, I can't even. I'm not the type of person to guess. So without looking at a good clear picture, I I, I just don't know. If you can email me a picture, uh, I, I'm actually have got my laptop with me. Um, and the 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 address is rushing. You know, I'm Felder rushing, but my email is rushingfelder at yahoo dot com. If you want to try that, I'll take a look at it. All right. Okay. Thanks so much. Rushingfelder at yahoo dot com. Then yeah, send me a picture, and I'll see what I can come up with. Until then, I'm 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 not the type of person to guess. All right. Okay. Thanks so much. Okay, right. Kerry. Appreciate your call. Uh huh. All righty, Java, I appreciate you, man. You know, when I'm on the road, you got to push all the buttons and all for me, but uh, I put my hands in my pocket so I don't accidentally hang up on you. I'm Horticulture's Felder Rushing. I'm broadcasting from down in Louisiana. Look forward to seeing some of y'all at the Max Downtown Meridian. It's a fabulous, incredible place, just incredible. Uh, but I'll be giving a talk starting at 930 tomorrow morning at the Max. And by the way, if you want to know other garden events that are going on, go to Facebook, Mississippi Gardening Facebook. We always post stuff there. Mississippi Gardening on Facebook. By the way, I found the uh, website if you want to know more about the Fondren Bottle Tree Garden Tour. Uh, it's got, we, they, I forgot they got a real simple uh, website. It's called FondrenGardenTour.com. F-O-N-D-R-E and FondrenGardenTour.com. Uh, let's go down to Melody. What's going on down in lower Alabama, lady? What's up? Oh, just absolutely fabulous, perfect weather. <laughs> Except it's getting a little dry, but hey, what can I say when other places in the world are flooding, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's right. I mean, you've had your share of flooding before. We have, that's true. But I did want to ask you a couple of questions. Okay, so I have grown potatoes by accident in my compost heap before because I have a yeah. – it's more of a leaf pile compost. It doesn't heat up. Yeah, I'm not I, – I can't deal with all those percentages and temperatures and things. Don't right. want to. Let me put it that way. But anyway, so everything you see about potatoes, it says get the seed potatoes. Is there a, an advantage to buying seed potatoes or – because I usually – you know, the ones that I grow are just – when I cut maybe one that's got a big yeah. sprout on it, and I just throw that in there, and it grows. Well, there, there, there is a real, <laughs> yeah, there, there, there is a real advantage. Just like uh, if you were going to grow tomatoes, you wouldn't uh-huh. want to save seeds from those little hard knobby things they have in the grocery store. You want to get a really good variety that, that produces better, has better flavor, and all like that. And the ones that you see in the in the the, the store, except for some of the really unusual ones, you know, the little small. Uh, pretty kind the the majority of them are commercial varieties they're bred to be uniform and productive and they actually grow better further north in the summertime uh the, the, so if i'm going to grow stuff if i got to take up the space to grow potatoes here the amount of time and space and all like that i deal with something that's kind of cool because let's face it you can buy potatoes cheaper than you can grow them but uh so if you want if you want to try to grow some go ahead and, and, and get uh, uh, potatoes of a name variety is would be kind of fun. Some of the little colorful ones, uh, little the small varieties. You know, there's purple ones and yellow ones and real all different kinds. You know, right. long skinny orange ones. And so, if you're gonna do that, go ahead and and uh, and go online. You can find some really good sources of interesting potatoes rather than those big old knobby things you find at the grocery store. Okay, well that answers that question. Thank you. Now about my rose. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's a buff beauty from the antique rose emporium. 
Yep, and I've climate. had it probably ten years or more, and it's just not happy where it is. I mean, it's, it has it has bloomed in the past, but last year it had one bloom, I think. Now, um, and it's, so it's it's a mature root. It's a climber, and I'm just so should I to move it to some place hopefully that would be more pleasant to it. Should I cut it down to like eight or ten inches and then just move that well, part? Yeah, you 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 definitely need to cut it back. I don't know, you know, the buff beauty is a pretty good sized plant. It's uh, it's uh, a, a a climber, and so right. it's just, I mean, even a lot of people prune it in, into a, a large shrub. But you definitely want to cut it back when you move it. So what I would do is I'd find a nice sunny spot where it can, where it has all the room to grow, and go ahead and dig your hole ahead of time, uh, because you know when you di- first dig the dirt and then add some stuff to it. It needs to be rained on a few times. It needs to mellow a little bit. So I go ahead and dig the nice, good-sized hole, and then sometime in February, January, February, cut uh, the buff you and move her then. Okay, so January, February. All right, that's what I wanted to know because it's just yeah. such a beautiful flower, but it just is not happy where it is. And Yeah, yeah and a lot of people don't realize plants can sulk. <laughs> well, I think it really <laughs> sulked last year, and it's, you know, yeah. of course, it's, we've had a, it's been a hard year for roses because or, or anything because we had floods and then we had dry and then we had more you know not flood floods but you know so yeah. so yeah it's been a mess but that's well weather, right? you know but there there are a lot lot of plants that, that that like that kind of a lot of plants don't grow well at all if we have too good a weather so you know it's just that's the reason I grow a whole bunch of different stuff that way I always got something. Well, I've got a bunch of those old lady plants that I've been collecting over the years, and they're the ones that I really like. <laughs> Good. So, yeah. Well, all right. Well, have fun. Go ahead and start digging on that. Matter of fact, go ahead and dig the hole, and then sometime in the next uh, uh, a week or so later, plant you some pansies around the edge so you got something to, to look at, you know, while you're waiting for your buff beauty to move. I love pansies, but my deer, my wild deer that come into my yard love pansies yeah. a whole lot more than I yeah. do. <laughs> all right. But well, I, good to hear I'll from try. you, lady. Thanks. Okay. Bye-bye. See ya. Okay, now let's slide up to north central Mississippi to Eupora. Hey, Rachel, good morning. How are you? Good morning, Elder. How are you? So uh, far, so good. Well, good. Um, I just want to mention that the goldenrod is the state flower of Kentucky. And, uh, it, it is. This- and, 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 and also Alabama. Or it oh, used to be okay. Alabama. Yeah, they changed it from from uh, goldenrod to camellia. But I think it's uh, their their state native wildflower. But anyway, it's a beautiful plant. Aha, uh-huh, it is. All wildflowers are, and I wish our Department of Transportation would uh, take a cue from Texas and let the wildflowers live on the highways. Well, you know, I, I'm I'm with you in principle. Matter of fact, uh, I, I actually wrote the Extension Service publication on wildflower meadows. Uh, but the truth is, uh, you know, the, the highway department, the more people complain about the weeds than admire the wildflowers. So what they're doing is they're they're not spraying as much and not mowing as often, and they're letting a lot of stuff bloom in the spring and then cutting it in the summer, and then along the along the edges. Is where you see the the beautiful fall stuff. So you know they're 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 starting to let the wildflowers grow, not because of the beauty, and not just because of the pollinators and all like that, but because they just can't afford the manpower and chemicals. But I I, I see places, uh, rural stretches along highways, and uh, even along interstates, uh, particularly between Hattiesburg and and Poplarville, where they're 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 letting them grow, and they just they mm-hmm. they mow once in the summertime. You know, to knock down the spring stuff, and they sort of neaten stuff up in case somebody has to pull off the road, and then they mow uh, in the the late fall after the wildflowers bloom. So you know, they're 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 working it out. Okay, sounds good, Felder. Enjoy your show. Well, thank you very much, Rachel. I appreciate your call. All right. And uh, bye. Okay, let's go down to Ocean Springs and talk to Allie. Hey, Allie. Good morning. Good morning. Howdy. So. I've been trying to figure out, I have a ton of like liriope and monkey grass all over different old flower beds in my yard. And I'm yeah. not sure when is a good time to dig it up and transplant it because the internet has told me a lot of different things. And I don't know yeah. on the coast when I can do that. 
Yeah, the internet will mess you up, and I'll tell you why, because there's a lot of people on there who can't keep things simple. They got to feel important by coming up with a lot. You have to be all knowledgeable, uh, and i just give you a real quick example. The the, the uh, couple of calls ago, Melanie, she said she didn't want to do the compost with all the carbon nitrogen ratio and turning and aerating and macrophilic bacteria and all that kind of stuff, so she just piles it up, and that works, just piling it up works you don't have to do all that stuff anyway to answer your question there's a handful of plants that really don't care when you dig them up and move them and uh monkey grass is one of them uh, yesterday i dug up some cast iron plant or aspidistra at my son's house and i just dug it up and it's, a, it's still practically summertime i just sit on the ground in my yard i wet it down once and i might get around to planting it next week but you know you can move monkey grass anytime you want to any time that you can do it physically without hurting yourself. Great. The cool mornings have made me want to do it, and I wasn't sure if that was yeah. a bad idea. So yeah. that's now, awesome. now here, here, Here's one thing to keep in mind, Allie, is uh, monkey grass. And by the way, some people say liriope, some people say liriope. And it's actually supposed to be liriope because it's named after a river nymph named liriope. Anyway, uh, monkey grass, whether it's mondo or, or, or liriope, is, is, it puts up all of its growth for the whole year just in the spring see so if you if you cut it back uh in the winter time and move it it'll put up nice clean new growth in the spring if you cut it in the summertime you got nothing till spring see so if you're going to move some now and you want you want to leave the foliage on there that's okay but you can clean it up in the winter time and the new growth will come out really nice and clean awesome then i'm going to do that Okay, real quick tip, get a file, a flat file, and sharpen your shovel or take your shovel down to an Ace Hardware place because those guys will sharpen your stuff. A sharp shovel, cut through it just like slicing through cake. If you don't, you're going to have to jump on it. Uh, okay, uh, great. Yeah, yeah. Some of it I think is pretty minutes. old because it's outlining old flower beds that I didn't put in and have lived here 10 years, so it's well, been there a while. Well, a sharp shovel just crunches right through it. It makes a huge difference. And this is not just an old guy saying that. It's true. It almost feels good if you got a sharp shovel. Okay, I will do that. All righty, Allie. Appreciate your call. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Bye. You bet. Java, did I hear you're going to be DJing someplace on a, one of the, the adverts just then? Yeah, we're um, doing Art in the Garden um, next Friday. Um, the Moth, they're going to have their pop-up porch, and we're going to be showing the film, uh, the Walter Anderson documentary um, on the green. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to play some music out there. And where, where is that going to be again? Uh, it's going to be at the Art Museum, downtown downtown oh. Jackson. Cool. While folks are down there, uh, they've got a they're, they've got two gardens there. They've got a really nice, what I call an old south garden with the lawn and the shrubs and the, the trees and the flowing walks and all like that. But they also have a contemporary garden that's full of Mississippi native wildflowers in full bloom. And I want you to pay attention to the sumac tree they got there. It should be starting to show some really good fall colors. It's one of the top native plant urban gardens in the south and it's done done by robert poor landscape architect robert poor down there and uh, and i'm going to be at the max and that's next friday uh i'm going to be at the the max this weekend this saturday 9 30 tomorrow morning at the max um talking about gardening fall gardening and um i think that'll be a lot of fun and then next week a week from this sunday on october the 9th my garden is going to be one of a, uh, a come-and-go garden tour, five bucks to, to tour a, a dozen and a half quirky gardens in Fondren. If you want information about that, it's called FondrenGardenTour.com. Five bucks and all the proceeds are going. Actually, they're going into my pocket. I'm going to spend every penny of it <laughs> on plants You know, uh, for, for, for beautifying Jackson. Uh, the, you know, There's not a single person going to make a penny off of it going straight into uh, help beautify our public space. So y'all anyway, taking all uh, of the proceeds and putting it right back in the ground. <laughs> that's right. That's right. We're, we're, we're going to take it. We're going to, we're going to bury all of our loot. It sort of <laughs> reminds me of a bad pirate. You know why a pirate uh, uh, puts, buries his, tr his uh, treasure in the ground, in the garden? No. Every pirate knows that booty is, sh is, sh is uh, shin deep. Okay, I had to. I was thinking about it. It's like, wait a minute, Felder. We're on. We're yeah. we're live on the air, man. That's right. Booty, booty is just shin deep. 
Skin day. <laughs> a- anyway, n- enough of that. Um, I'm down here at the in Ascension County between New Orleans and Baton Rouge. Going to talk to Master Gardeners as soon as I get off the air. Um, but I wanted to mention something. We got the, a lot of time to talk, folks. If you want to give us a call, the, it's toll free one eight seven seven MPB ring. We got a lot of time to chat about gardening, so give us a call. Um, then before we go to this this first call, let me mention something happened. My son, uh, Ira who's a hotshot lawyer. He's a veteran. He was a Marine. He's an Army JAG officer now. He's served on four continents. Um, He and his beautiful wife, the mother of my granddaughter, live in a nice house in Jackson with a huge crepe myrtle tree. I'm talking about a crepe myrtle tree that I can't put my arms barely two-thirds of the way around the trunk. It's a huge tree taller than a two-story house but it's been it's got that crepe myrtle bark scale and it's turned black it's dripping stuff all over the ground it's dripping all over her car the mother of my grandchildren um is making it sticky and slippery and it's just a terrible situation and they decided they didn't want to put a bunch of poison in the ground so my son and i cut down a crepe myrtle tree uh wednesday and we picked up all the pieces and uh, and uh, going to recycle some into a fence, some other wood yesterday. But we cut down a tree that was two stories tall. Couldn't put my arms more than two thirds of the way around it. Cut it down to a stump. And um, when people are talking about pruning crepe myrtles being crepe murder, no, I can talk about crepe murder because I mean we killed it, and we're going to grind the stump out next week. Anyway, just want to let folks know if you feel bad about pruning your crepe myrtles. Don't get me started. Uh, now let's go down to Wilbur in Hattiesburg. Wilbur, what's going on? Hey, uh, not much, daughter. How are you? Fine, fine. What's up? Very good. Uh, you know, I want to start exploring some lettuces. I've never planted them before. I've heard you talking about them, and it's gotten me interested. What pipes are going to do better for us, or does it really matter that much? It really it really doesn't matter because they all come up real fast. Um you know, there, there's the head type lettuce, the kind that you know, like like you buy a head of lettuce looks like a head of cabbage. They don't do as well in our in our climate because lettuce doesn't like hot weather. It doesn't like hard freezes, but it grows great in the late summer, fall, early winter, and again the late winter and and spring. So you know, we got two winters opportunity. The the heading type doesn't do as well as just the the, the looser leaf stuff. Um, I plant. Uh, several different kinds. I, I get some curly kinds. I get some upright kinds. Uh, I get red kinds and green kinds, and you know, and I just mix the seeds of four or five or six different varieties together, and just sow them real thin, and I wet them down. Three days, they're up. And, and uh, I grow them in yeah. pots too. I grow, I grow them in containers. Yeah, that's what I'm planning. Uh, so yeah, I got I've got some seed. And I just wanted to make. I didn't want to plant stuff. The iceberg, I'm not going to plant because it's just not going to be good. But iceberg, uh, t- iceberg tastes brother. like iceberg. T- iceberg tastes like water. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, so I was looking at the red sorrel and uh, butter crunch and some garlic. Yeah. That's my weekend plan. Yeah. Uh, the the uh, the, uh, the the sorrel is really really pretty. It's more of an upright, you know, as and you know, and the butter crunch is more of a loose spready type. And that's a really good combination, but but you know, find one or two other varieties. If you want to throw some kale in there, you know, you can you plant it out there. And if we get a hard freeze that kills the lettuce, the kale will keep right on growing. I right. may I may do that. That's that's a great uh, great suggestion. Thanks. Oh yeah, two two real quick tips, uh, uh, Wilbur. One is. Uh, it, it, lettuce doesn't have a real deep root system, so fertilizer washes away real quick. It's good to give it just a real light feeding when it first comes up, and maybe a couple of weeks later, give it another light shot rather than a whole bunch of all at one time. And uh, and also keep in mind, you may need to put some insect netting uh, over it just to keep the you know worms and stuff like that out. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, uh, and when I when I harvest mine, I just take scissors. I take a colander and scissors, and I just go out there and I just cut the leaves that I want and leave some. You know, you can get two or three or four cuttings off of a bed of lettuce and still have something pretty to look at. And throw some pansies around the edge. Let's have some fun. Yeah, I'm just making a whole big uh, city of lights out in my front yard. There you go. There you go. And when you're tired of looking at it, you can eat it. 
<laughs> I certainly will. Okay, Wilbur, appreciate you, man. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, now we're going up to Oliver and Olive Branch. Hey, Oliver, good morning. Okay, uh, Felder, uh, thanks for taking my call. Last week I called. I had a, 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 a crate myrtle that's in the yard. The, the trunk of it, I guess you can call it a trunk, yeah. it has turned black, and it has this white stuff on it. Yeah, white right. crusty stuff, little little small dots, and a lot of times they run yeah. together in the crusty stuff. Yeah. Yeah, this is called crepe myrtle bark scale, and it's a new insect. It just showed up a few years ago, uh, and it is devastating. Uh, my little my little part of downtown Fondren and Madison and uh, Texas and Georgia, it is devastating crepe myrtles. And there's only really one thing you can do to control it. You know, you can get rid of the tree. This, this, this is going to be a problem from here on with crepe myrtles. It's just going to be part of growing crepe myrtle. There is a liquid insecticide that you mix with water, and you pour it around the roots, and it's absorbed by the roots and moves up into the plant, and it does a good job of controlling the scale for a year or two. But you, the, here's the problem. It doesn't work well at all unless you put it out in the spring, March, April, May, sometime in there. There's not much at all practical you can do right now except take a a, uh, a power uh, washer, you know, on the lowest setting. You don't want to blow the bark off, but, you know, you can sort of clean it up, you know, now or, or after we get a frost and make it look okay, but this, the, there's no sprays that work. There's no dormant oil. You know, the only thing we know for sure that works is this liquid systemic insecticide, and only if you put it out in the spring. I'm real sure of this. So it's depressing. Go on and take the crate metal out. Yeah, I mean, we just cut one down for, in my son's yard. You know, he he had yeah, his yard in the trunk. trunk. Yeah, oh no, I couldn't put my arms around the trunk of this thing. I could not. Yeah, I can't, I could not put my arms around it. But uh, you know, I now, had one in my front yard. I took. What, what's that? Did you get a picture of it? Oh yeah, yeah. I got a. I got a, a before, during, and after picture. Around. What's that? Okay, I see a crate myrtle that you can't put your arms around. Yeah, well, I actually I have a picture of me hugging the oldest crepe myrtle in North America is in in uh, North uh-huh. Car- in South Carolina, planted back uh-huh. in the 1780s. But uh, no, I you can't, you can't put your well, there, there's nothing to put my arms around there because that tree is gone. So it's best I go in and cut them down. I hate to say it, you know, but you know this this pro- unless you you know uh, the insecticide does work. You have to put out every couple of years or so in the spring, and it does work. But sooner or later. You know, if you can't treat them with that stuff, ain't nothing else we can do. I'm real okay, sure. Okay, so what about, my, what about my other crepe murders that don't have it? And sooner or later, they're going to get it. Oh. I, you know, I, I, I work with the Crepe Myrtle Society of America and Texas yeah. A&M, oh. which has spent millions of dollars researching this. They know for sure. And if Texas A&M and the Crepe Myrtle Society of America says this is just the way it's going to be, I'm with them. I'm not going to hold out false hope like a lot of people do. Okay, but I don't have a false hope for it. I, 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 I don't mind being relieved of it because all the leaves, <laughs> I mean the blooms, go in my pool. <laughs> I'm with you. You know, it's just one of those things. You know, some people grow facial yeah. hair, some people don't. Some people grow crape right. myrtles, some people find other stuff. Right. Okay, my friend. Well, I certainly appreciate you, and I okay, appreciate good luck. Good luck on it, Oliver. All right, my friend. Have a good day. And a good week. Okay. Thanks. And I'm going to be uh, using uh, Java. We, we cut some of the biggest branches out. I'm going to stand them up in my yard. I got a fence around my front yard, and on every fence post, I'm, uh, I'm going to uh, wire some of these upright things. They're going to be six, eight, ten feet tall, kind of irregular. And I'm going to connect them with, with cross pieces made of the crate myrtle. I'm going to make me a crate myrtle fence. Now, that should, be, that should be something nice right there. Well, you know, it's just, you know, and I don't have, I've already got it. It's some pretty wood. I, we hated cutting this tree down because it was so pretty, and my son had serious remorse when he cut it down, but he, but his wife says, bye, We're at, we don't, I don't like this sticky stuff. So, anyway, that's just the way it goes. Okay, hey, how are your kids doing? Oh, uh, they're doing good. You know, we're in, we're in school. Uh, they're excited for the fair because, you know, the, the weather has changed. So now it's fair time. 
<laughs> is that that next starts next Wednesday? I guess. I think yeah, it does. It's the top of October, which is uh, in a couple of days. And you know, I've always said, you know, the fair is when the weather changes. People start out wearing shorts and and you know and and short sleeve shirts, but halfway through the fair, they start putting on on sweaters and stuff. State fairs when our weather in Central Mississippi changes. Anyway, a horticulture spell to rush me and Java Catholic. No, the other folks at MPB, we really like bringing this program to y'all. We're going to be talking about gardening right up to the end of the hour, and then I'm going to walk right out of here, right onto a stage, talking to Master Gardeners in the Ascension Parish, Louisiana. This is a lot of fun. Did have a really, really good time up in Winston County, Louisville, this past week. Looking forward to seeing some of y'all tomorrow morning at the Max Downtown Meridian. It's going to be starting at 930. Bring a plant. We're going to have a nice plant swap. And then um, next week is going to be the Fondren Garden Tour with my yard. First time in decades it's been open to the public. And I'm having to fix it up and pick stuff up and clean stuff up and neaten stuff up. And it's still going to look like, well, like something that I would do. Anyway, let's go down to Mobile and talk with Mikey. Mikey, how are you today? Good morning. Oh, if there was ever a gestalt gardener, I suppose I'm her. Okay. I am she, I should say, right? <laughs> yep. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, yeah. The hurricane that almost hit us, um, uh, and God bless the folks in Florida. Okay. Yep. And, uh, yep. Okay. I'm asking a gardening question is uh, regarding basil that I uh, I took a planter uh with permission from um, a neighbor's brick windowsill, the, yep. the the basil had been planted. It's it's now. I knew it wasn't going to make it up there much longer. It's it's uh, because we have slam weather. We went from yep. 95 degrees with a heat index of 115 yeah, I, I, down to 50 overnight. Um, uh, so anyway, I took that. But there are little kids involved. The grandchildren of, of this person. And right. uh, to yeah, you know, near around first grade. Yeah. Well, and okay, I, I, so to, I want I want to I want to know to. if planting lettuce and plugs in that basil, which has no drainage hole, and I don't want to damage the the thing by drilling a drainage hole. I know how to do that. Um, uh, or is it better to go with um, green onions or both? Can I or, or both? Them in both. in other words, so that the basil is not dead. Because they were planted That's incredibly I mean. close. To, they were planted like mescaline. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, lettuce is is just what you know. A, a nice container is going to have several different things. It's going to have something spiky, something roundy, something frilly, and something cascading. And so mixing this all stuff all together always looks better. And if something dies, or you eat it, or you harvest it, or it freezes, you really can't tell. So all of my containers, all of my beds, all of my flowers, the back of my truck, I've got lots of different things all mixed together. Uh, if they've got grandchildren, I want to put some oregano in there because oregano cascades, and it grows right through the wintertime all year long, and they can make spaghetti or chili or pizza with it. But you know, oregano and some some uh, some chives and lettuce and basil, and it looks good. It looks good. There's different colors of all of those. You're a gardening genius. What can I say? Thank you. No, that's <laughs> very no, much no, this for is this, 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 Mikey, this is the way people have been gardening for centuries, long before we started putting stuff in long, skinny rows. Doing so, this uh, for you know, someone just, else and her yeah, children. So, yeah. Okay. And, uh, the you kids, know. The, the, You're a granddaddy. The, the, I am. And uh, the, there's nothing that's more nothing that's more satisfying to children than something that we get immediate gratification, and culinary herbs are the way to do it. Anyway, Mikey, good to hear from you this morning. Carney, let's uh, stay in Mobile. Let's talk to Maureen calling from Mobile. Good morning, lady. Good morning. I love hearing you and, and Java every Thank week. You. I have a quick question. Um, there's something that blooms this time of year, every year, and I say, oh, my gosh, I've got to ask Phil, what in the world is that? So you gave your email address this morning, and I emailed it to you, but it's a large tree with huge yellow clusters of flowers. It's just like fireworks have gone off on it, and I was hoping you could identify it. Well, let me see here. Let me see. Maureen sent me a picture. Just going to take a real quick look. It is a golden rain tree. Oh, 
no, well, that's no, not I, name, I, is I, it? I can't tell if that's golden rain tree uh, or it's western soapberry. It's either golden rain tree or western soapberry, one of the two. But I think it's golden rain tree. It's got the real pretty pods. They're going to have kind of a, a pinkish cast to them a little bit later. It, yes, that's right, some of the ones that are fading. But uh, I may, may, may not have gotten the picture at its full glory, but uh, I finally decided to take a shot and and say, so when it doesn't seem to bloom for that long a period. No. Yeah, most, does, most, not yeah, to most of I'm pretty sure this is golden <laughs> rain tree, but it, it could be Western soap beer. I'm just pretty sure it's golden. And, and it, it, the Latin name starts with a cold ruteria paniculata. Whew, I haven't thought of that in a long time. I can't balance the checkbook, but I know Latin. <laughs> anyway. Right. Well, pretty, thanks. You know, go, thanks so much. Google, Have a good weekend. Google, Google, Google Golden Rain Tree and see if that's not what it is. I sure will. Thank you so much. Have a good weekend. All right. Appreciate it. I love this technology. Thanks for joining us. I'm impressed, Felder. You pulled that. You pulled that video. That uh, that picture up really, really quickly. You know, I I can remember. See, you're too young to remember back before cell phones. But I know I got my laptop here. I got it ready uh, to to go in. It's just going to uh, plug into a thing when I give a talk in a few minutes. But uh, no, I really like this. I, I know the quality of, uh, is not as good uh, of the broadcast because I do this from my, my phone. You know, we'd rather uh, be in, in uh, that fancy studio at Mississippi Public Broadcasting. Uh, but it works. It works. Yeah, no, it works. And I looked up those because uh, I I had never heard of those uh, Western Snowberry and Golden Rain Tree. And uh, yeah. those are nice. Yeah, and they kind of they are similar, especially when 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 they are both pink um with the with the blooms but uh yeah. yeah that was those was some some nice looking nice looking flowers well i i studied both of those back in college and we're talking about 40 something years ago and uh and i see them from time to time but they just leaves and they just look kind of alike you know unless you deal with them all the time but anyway we're looking for alternatives for crepe myrtles because crepe myrtles popular as they are the lilac of the south they got real problems my son has got to to make a decision He's got a two story house and uh, we cut this tree down, and the house looks naked. And, by the way, he noticed he got to really repaint his porch now. He didn't notice it before. But we got to come up with some alternatives that are going to be pretty and stunning and attractive and not drip sap all over the place. So we're already starting to, you know, to he and I, kick around ideas about um, river birches or vitex or maybe a golden rain tree. Now that is that, that's funny. He didn't see, you know. Now that the tree's gone, you see all those kind of imperfections that was hidden behind the tree. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, it's just like what, what, if you ever shaved your beard, you're gonna realize that Daddy's put on some face weight. That's the way it happens. <laughs> you know, when you, you know, your children. If you ever cut your your beard off, job, your children are gonna cry. <laughs> they, I think they, I honestly <laughs> think they would. <laughs> <laughs> that's just the way it goes, man. That's the way it goes. Uh, I've got a. And by the way, this is uh, partly personal, but uh, a word of advice to all the folks out there: I got to have a little thing, a little small thing, not serious. The doctor says not going to be a big deal at all, but I uh, should have worn sunscreen. My nose going to have to. I went from being an old guy to an old guy with a little thing on his nose got to be cut off, but because I didn't wear sunscreen when I was your age, Java. I'm just saying, if you're going to be out in the sun, put some sunscreen on, especially on your nose and tips of your ears. Well, Fel, it's been fun. I hope you have safe travels um, as you are traveling to Meridian and, and have a good talk that you're about to give in about uh, two minutes. Hey, I'm literally walking out, out of this room onto a stage. Uh, folks, the Mac 930 downtown Meridian tomorrow morning, bring a plant, and FondrenGardenTour.com. If you're curious about what my yard, front yard and back look like, it's going to surprise you. Anyway, we're going to be back same time, same place next week. Y'all have a good trip. If you have a chance to take a kid to a farmer's market or a garden center, they got pansies and lettuce and stuff, take them. Show kids how to do what we do best, folks. It is so crucial for children to get dirty. It's really important. And if they can grow something that's pretty and they can eat it or help cook with it, mow better. See y'all next week. Job, appreciate your hard work. And we'll be back in the studio next week. Bye, y'all. This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app 